well, I guess I could do a little bit more uplift protocol. Uh, this time, I guess I could do a, a like a spotlight on Star herself as a character and how I have her use her powers and everything. Okay, first and foremost, all the rounds of medical stuff she's going through is ties into the fact that she can't feel things like most people do. Like in terms of tactile sensation, she can feel pressure and things like that. In order for her to also feel like a little bit of the rays of the sun, you know, genuine warmth, she has to go inside the heart of a star and everything and just like sit there and like bask it in. Because I got that little idea from the, the Haven TV series where that one guy, you know, he couldn't feel anything. Like he'd have to be looking at you and he'd have to see the character actually, you know, basically grabbing his hand and know that something happening. Like, uh, like when he had, had the door slammed on his hand and he just looks at it like, oh, what, what? Oh, okay. Oops. But in Star's case, it also ties into the fact that the you know, way her spine was uh, basically set up uh, to hide her brother, essentially. So, because <laughs> part of what he does is the the scholars weaved a little pocket, or you know, built a little pocket in the weave for him to stay in. But in order to keep him sane, you know, they had to interlink the twins somehow. So that whole setup was set, you know, put in motion. But with the way Star uses her powers, um, the whole world feels like glass to her because she can't really, she has to gauge, like, how much pressure do I put on something? So that's why usually when she's rescuing people, she'll, you know, take a part of the building and, like, lift them that way. Kind of like how I had her save the people from the magical fire and everything. Now... Uh, she can feel if she gets hit, like, closer to the heart, like with the, the, the specialized discs that certain Agent Brooks gave to Toph at one point via her dad. But I made it to where, uh, yeah, certain kinds of earth magic and basically certain kinds of keeper tech are a detriment to her. Now, uh, when she eventually gets her white defender belt, some certain aspects will change. But, you know, I'm trying to plant the seeds of, like, how can you get a superhero to solve problems not only just through, you know, just regular power use, or, in Star's case, that's why even when I had her taking on part of the pirate fleet stuff, to take out some of the pirates, she used the environment around her to basically freeze them in place or cause like you know hazards to where they can't cross across certain areas and they have to double back and go back around and a lot of the superheroes don't have to worry about this as much but the ones that are more strength based and like partial invulnerability or full invulnerability to certain things they have to deal with certain other considerations so it's it's probably also my response to the whole idea like, oh, well, Superman has all these powers. That makes him boring. Yeah, it's like, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, just to you uh, or whoever has that mindset because there's plenty of us out here that have a different mindset to that. So there you go. If you have a character that has a decent amount of powers, sure, they'll do some heavy lifting on certain things and it'll make some sense later, but... I basically try to have Star think her way through some situations if she can. Um, her friends are also like the two. Like, there's different specialties that they're good at. And they will use that to great effect. Um, Star isn't going to use her matter, her, her dark matter, like, uh, laser aspect much. Because, it, one, it's very new power. And two, uh, she's going to be asking... Um, Atlan for some additional information about that because in the Uplift Protocol universe there isn't too much stuff out there that uses dark matter as like a direct um, like either fuel source or otherwise. It's usually for very advanced civilizations. Even the Typherians are only just now getting into using dark matter for some stuff. And they're on one of the, you know, they're one of the people on the Council of Five. So I wanted to make that aspect where it'll be coming to play later to be fairly important. But how you have your characters use their powers can also be a reflection of their personality and their morals. So that's the reason why I have, you know, Lorraine have little flashes of guilt when she's thinking about putting like the, the, 
the paralyzation pinch on Anna to get her to shut up, <laughs> you know. But that I did that to reflect on like what Doc really uses her powers on versus what would somebody who had more petty kind of mindset, like truly petty mindset, would do. Like, um, it's like uh, if you gave Hillary books all of Star's powers, she would be like the Lex Luthor equivalent. You know, in terms of like, I have all your powers now, ha 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 ha. You know, I'm so superior, ha 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 ha. You know, <laughs> but not really. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it, again, that's what I'm having the most fun about with this series. I figured I'd give a little bit of ramble about that. It's not the powers that make the hero, it's the hero that makes the powers. So, have a good day, everybody.